everyone, it's Skippy. In today's video, we've got some awesome stuff to cover, including where you can pre-order both the standard and premium copy of Story of Seasons A Wonderful Life, and when you can expect to be playing it. We're so close to wrapping up these videos with the release in Japan later this month. Let's get into it. First, let's talk about our release date and where you can pre-order from since that's probably why you're here, but I want to clear something up. In one of my last videos, I showed a premium edition with a goat plush and a limited edition with a notebook and stickers. Both came with a poster and the game itself, but obviously they're quite different. At the time, the article didn't explain which version was available for where, but according to nintendolife.com, the premium edition is available to the USA and Canada, and the limited edition is available for Europe and Australia. You can check this out in the article in the description below if you want to see the whole thing. As I record this video, the current expected release date is June 20th of 2023. And the reason why I say expected is because there has not been an official release date from Exceed and Marvelous. However, we can see this date on two of the three pre-order sites, GameStop and Amazon. Now, for any of you that know anything about video game releases, June 20th is on a Tuesday, which a lot of games are released on Tuesdays because it's easier for the physical releases in store because of the way that they receive their shipments. This isn't confirmed, but just what I read online. This is another reason why I think this will be the date the game comes out. Currently, you can pre-order on Exceed's website, GameStop, and Amazon here in the West for USA or Canada. They have the links on their official website, and as I said before, both Amazon and GameStop have the same release dates, so I imagine this to be very accurate, otherwise Exceed wouldn't promote it on their own website, or I'd like to think at least. In the US and Canada, there are two versions available right now. The standard version for $49.99 USD, that includes just a physical copy of the game, and the premium version for $59.99 USD that includes a large cloth poster and a 3.5 inch by 4 inch goat pocket plushie with the physical game in a custom box. Which, I mean for $10 more isn't that bad. I know there's some speculation on how these are terrible offerings and I definitely get why some people in Europe and Australia would be upset because they do not get the goat plushie which is tragically sad, but I am personally not disappointed with the US and Canada version because for the price difference, it isn't that much of a loss, but that's just my opinion, so feel free to express yours in the comments. Honestly, I just wanna see what the posters are gonna look like, because that hasn't been revealed yet alongside the custom box, with box art by series illustrator Igusa Matsuyama. Right now, the only platforms that are available at this time to pre-order either edition are Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 5, and Xbox Series X. On XC's official website, it states that A Wonderful Life will be available for Nintendo Switch, PS5, Xbox Series X and S, and Steam. I am surprised to see Xbox Series S not available for pre-order with the rest of the consoles. I am not surprised to not see Steam on here because these are physical copies only for pre-ordering. There is currently no availability for pre-ordering digitally, including consoles. And that, of course, means Steam. I know there's a good amount of you on here, including myself, that would really love the opportunity to pre-order the Premium Edition on Steam, and I am still hoping we get this. It'd be really easy to email a game code or even slip one inside the package of other goodies in the Premium Edition. Alright, let's get into our weekly updates, and we've got a decent amount of interesting stuff to talk about from the last few weeks. On December 21st, we got introduced to David, another Harvest Sprite. It says he prefers red clothes, and from what I remember, he was more of the extrovert of the group. Here it shows us inside the sprite's hut and David, or rather Knack, as he used to be called, is very spirited in his conversation. And in this last image, we're seen chatting with them just outside our house and he appears to be falling over or showing some intense emotion from the conversation. I always love these little guys and having little cutscenes with them. On December 22nd, we got introduced to Flat, or how he used to be called Flack. It says he is a harvest sprite that prefers yellow clothes, and from what I remember, he was more reserved than the other two. In our second photo, we're back in the Harvest Sprite's hut and it appears Flack is speaking about the blue feather. I find it really funny because our character looks absolutely petrified here. Maybe he's afraid of the impending marriage. I'd probably have that face too if I had to marry someone in just a year, or rather 40 days. And in this last photo, our three Harvest Sprites are back outside and Flack seems to be saying something to the other sprites that's making them laugh. Or he's annoyed by them. I'm not sure, but I love these guys. On the 28th, they posted their first picture of the Harvest Sprites each saying something. It says that the wonderful Harvest Sprites, the small forest residents, David, Ebony, and Flat, are taking a walk in Forgotten Valley in search of Nice, to which the next picture shows us Murray sitting on the bridge near Vesta's farm. In this image, he's enjoying the sun and waiting for donations, but the little Harvest Sprites are here in the corner. They're very obviously not part of this in-game screenshot, but I think the post is cute, 
and if anyone wants to translate what these guys are saying, drop it down in the comments. I appreciate translations so much. There's also several more of these types of updates, but since they don't have anything to do with game content, I decided to leave the rest of their little adventures out of the video to prevent it from being too long, so definitely check it out on their website. On December 29th, we got a big ranch life introduction to Tartan, a two-headed plant that you can befriend in Takakura's house in Chapter 2. It says that if you get along with him, you can crossbreed crops. In this first image, it shows us talking to Takakura in what I assume is an introduction of this absolute monstrosity of a plant in his house. In the second image, it shows us the mechanics of producing our own GMO crops, which is honestly so cool. On the left is our backpack, and on the right is where we combine our two crops to receive the crossbred seeds. In this case, it's a watermelon and a tomato. On the third image, it shows us the results of our seed selection with Tartan to be those lamp-like plants I showed a long, long time ago, which are these here. And in this last image, it shows us watering our new crops when it's still in an infant stage. And if I'm not mistaken, the crops on the right look like blue tomatoes. I don't think those are unripe, because they just don't look right. I wonder what those may be crossbred with. All I know is that this is one of the best ways to make thousands and thousands of dollars. I can't wait to find the best combinations, especially if they help cook specific foods in your kitchen. I'm curious, are there any other Story of Seasons games or previous Harvest Moon games that crossbred plants? I know I haven't played them all, so I'd really like to know that. And on December 31st, they posted a cute Happy New Year image to promote the game launching in Japan on January 26th, which I used to think was so far away when this came out in the Nintendo Direct in September. That can only mean June 20th won't be so far off. Now the reason why I'm showing you this is because there's something really important to note here with the animals in the display. We've seen all of them, except this owl, which the only time we've seen a pet owl in Harvest Moon was Harvest Moon Tale of Two Towns, which yes, I did Google, and this is what it looked like. The one in this image doesn't exactly look like that, but I'm led to believe that we'll have some sort of interaction with an owl, as we do with the tortoise and the other wildlife shown here. Well, what do you think, or what do you know? On January 2nd, we got a ranch life introduction to minigames, and let's call them extracurricular activities outside of farming. It says there's the excavation of the runes, cooking part-time job, camp game, etc. Which I'm really excited to see what else they have to offer. In this photo, we're at the dig site, doing our wonderful archaeologist hobby of finding weird artifacts to sell and to give as a gift, particularly to Nami. In the second image, we're doing our part-time cooking job by serving Hugh some food. We've seen footage of this before, but instead it was Grant. I can only hope the milk drinking game is coming back too, because that was definitely my favorite with Rock on a rainy day at the inn. And in this last photo, we're playing the tile game with Patrick, or Cassie. They'd be very upset that I don't know who's who. It appears we've won, given the score and our happy face. This is not an easy game, so do not be fooled by this picture. On January 9th, we got a big update to our customization abilities in the game. We saw a lot of this in the gameplay release that I covered last week. If you want to see the customization and all the gameplay in real time, check that out after you're done here. Now it says you can be more fashionable. You can now not only choose your clothes, but also your hairstyle and hair color. In this first image, we can see four sets of clothing that our character has access to. I imagine there will be a lot to choose from, or I hope. My only complaint is that they are sets of clothing and you can't mix and match the shirts and the pants, but that's okay. In the second image, we get another look at the hairstyles available, with the first two being the standard styles from the original games. I really like the diversity here that they've offered us, but I do wish there was a few longer styles to choose from, but it's possible we might get more of those in an update after release. In this third image, we can see the different hair colors to choose from, and I am very happy to see that they added some non-natural colors such as pink and blue. I think the variety here is pretty good. And in this last photo, we can see the pink outfit that we saw in the first image. I like it, but the gloves seem very bulky in comparison to the other ones on the other outfits. What do you think? Either way, I'm happy to see as many options as we can to customize ourselves in the game. On January 12th, we got confirmation that you can obtain baby sheep and goats, which solves a lot of issues from the original game, specifically with the goats. This game is renowned for its realistic elements, and in this case, milk production and pregnancy. In order for cows and goats to provide milk, they must have been pregnant and have had a baby within the last 40 game days, or one year. After that, they stop producing milk. In the original game, you could buy one goat from Van in the middle of the game, chapter 2 or 3, and it would provide goat's milk for one year, and then it would be done. There was no option to get it pregnant, like the cows, and you cannot sell it so you were stuck feeding it without getting any benefits from it. 
This is a really good needed update and a lot of people will enjoy. And they're just so cute. I think the baby goats might just be my favorite with their little horns. But I'm also really partial to the baby cows, so we'll see. During these updates, they also showcase the different in-game screenshots of the valley that I went over in my last video. I didn't want to focus on those in this video since we've covered them, but I am showing them to you now. If you want to get a longer look at them and my analysis, check out this video linked at the top. Now, if you've been here before, you know what time it is. It's time for the weekly poll. And in this case, I've got three for you. A few weeks ago, I asked on my community post, where are you going to explore first in Story of Seasons A Wonderful Life? which received 823 votes. Thank you so much for all of you who voted. And if you want to vote in my next one, stick around until the end to find out how. In fourth place, we've got the mansion at 6%. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I always loved going to Romana's mansion because I really enjoyed the interior and checking out her cats and the music was really fancy. In third place, we have the beach at 8%. And okay, so this doesn't surprise me because the beach in the last game was really boring. You couldn't really do anything with it or anything down there, so I really hope they give us a good reason to visit there more often, besides it being so pretty in this case. I love the beach in real life, so I've got some wishful thinking with this one. In second place, we've got Main Street at 30%, which is arguably the most lively place because everyone walks through town here, past the inn, Van's shop, and the Bluebird Cafe. You've also got a lot of people that live there too, so it's going to be really fun to wander around. And in first place, unsurprisingly at 56% is the farm. Of course we're going to want to scour every inch of our farm when we get in. I personally, besides checking out all the details, want to see if that shack is at the back of the farm and if it does anything this time around. I remember being very disappointed that it did absolutely nothing in Another Wonderful Life, so I'm hoping it's there and it has a purpose or they've moved it or converted it to something else. On my next one, I asked, who is your favorite Harvest Bright and why? I got a lot of answers that were all very much the same and you'll see why at the reveal. This poll got 663 votes, and once again, I appreciate you all for voting. In third place, we have Flat, aka Flack, at 15%. I actually really like him now that I'm older. He was my least favorite as a child, and that may have to do with the fact that I hated the color yellow. It's still not my favorite, but I've come to enjoy it more now. I like that his eyes are hidden by his bangs, and he's really adorable. In second place, we've got David, aka Knack, at 25%. And this guy is just so lively with his personality. He's definitely the leader of their little group. And in first place, we have Ebony, aka Nick, at a whopping 60%. Everybody loves this little guy with his baby face and long sleeves. He was my favorite when I was a kid, but that's because he's blue, which is still my favorite color now. On my most recent post, I asked, which format or platform are you going to play Story of Seasons A Wonderful Life? And I got really interesting results. In fourth place, we have Xbox S and X at 3%. Okay. I really expected this to be higher, and maybe more balanced out, which you'll see what I mean here in a second, because in third place, we have PS5 at 5%. Wow. I mean, I understand most people that also have an Xbox or PlayStation probably have a Switch, so maybe that's why. Now in second place, we have, as you suspect, PC at 16%, which I find easier to believe because not many people like playing these types of games on computer because the controls are different if you're using a keyboard, and the game isn't designed to be used with a keyboard to begin with, and most of the time, controller is only halfway supported. I personally will be recording with PC, which is why I choose to get it on the computer, but I also plan on getting it on the Switch too, which brings us to our first place winner at 76%, which is the Nintendo Switch. Okay, yes, this makes 100% sense. Well, it makes 76% sense. I suppose because the Story of Seasons games, Old Harvest Moon games, have always been on Nintendo, and I am super happy that they've branched out into other platforms, unlike some Nintendo games like Animal Crossing. It gives more people the opportunity to play. Story of Seasons Friends of Mineral Town sold over 1 million copies worldwide in its first year, which isn't to say that some of that wasn't on PlayStation, Xbox, or PC, but we have to assume most of those sales were on the Nintendo Switch. As long as the game is optimized for the Switch in a way that won't have some of the issues with the previous games, then I think people will absolutely adore it on there for nostalgia's sake and the easy, intuitive controls with the controller. If you'd like to participate in my polls, check the community section under my channel every Sunday at 4pm Pacific Time, or subscribe and get notified when it's posted. I will say though that I will probably stop doing weekly polls in videos after the release in Japan since there won't be as much to cover until the release gets closer for us in the West. But I also post interesting things there anyway, so vote while you can, and vote in the future too. This is coming so close to an end, but it's really just the beginning. 
What do you think? And where are you going to pre-order from? And once again, thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe for more updates from me. See you in the next one, and check out my gameplay release video here.